Okay, so today we have some things to take care of. Some plants are not doing so hot. Also, I feel like I'm not doing so hot. I'm so tired today and I don't know why. I just tried to have a nap, but I couldn't nap. So we're pushing through, but yeah, energy is not 100% today. I do have my green tea though, so bless. Oh, I hope I'm not getting sick. Oh my goodness, that would not be the vibe. I watered my philodendron splendid yesterday and the pole was leaning so much. It looked like it was gonna fall right off, like towards this way. So when I went to bed, I was like, I do not want that to be crashing in the night. So I turned it around so it would just like lean against the window, I guess, if it were to fall. And I just realized I forgot to turn it back around, but look at how beautiful it looks, especially in the sun. Oh my goodness, he's living his best life. I'm gonna try to turn him around though so he can be facing the light again. That moss pool is perfectly fine before, so I don't know why it's leaning so much now. I'm definitely gonna be getting the metal mesh next time. I think it's like wire, like metal wire, and then just coated with plastic. Or just making a really tall pole to start off with because it's the extensions that make it so unstable. Each joint there is, the more precarious it becomes, and this one is three poles put together. <laughs> Don't mind all the yellow leaves, um, those are fine, but I put like a big stone, a big rock in here to kind of stabilize the pot, so I think that's why it hasn't really fallen over yet, but yeah, a little bit sketchy. So I'm thinking of doing more just like daily plant vlog videos where I just pick up the camera and take you with me with for whatever like plant things I'm doing. So that's what we're doing today, and the plant things that I have to do are, first of all, treat my alocasia fry deck and probably my philodendron gloriosum right there for spider mites. So I discovered spider mites on this guy yesterday. I just happened to notice. Um, yeah, they're all like in the sinus there. You can see them crawling. They're on pretty much every leaf. I don't know how well you'll be able to see. Um, I think I'm showing these on a different video too. I discovered this yesterday and I just haven't gotten around to it yet, which is not great. You know, you want to treat these as soon as possible, ideally. But for me, sometimes it honestly takes a day or two to get around to it. So we are going to be taking the fry deck and also the philodendron gloriosum to the tub to give them a spider mite treatment. The lighting is crazy. Sorry, you can't see very well. I don't see, well, that's not true. I haven't even really inspected. Oh, I can see. It's not as bad, but I can see a tiny, tiny amount of webbing between the sinus. Um, so I'm definitely gonna be treating the gloriosum as well. Even if I didn't treat, even if I didn't see spider mites, I would be treating it because it's in such close proximity to the fry deck. And I'm actually quite lucky that it's the fry deck because there's only these two plants here. I mean, maybe I should treat the painted lady because that used to be right here like right in front of these plants. So honestly, this one could be infected too. I don't want to touch with my hands because I ju did just touch the fry deck. It did for some reason give me this really stunted leaf. Like look at how tiny that is. I have no idea why. Very Well, I'm suspecting that it's because of underwatering. I really underwatered this plant, but who knows, maybe it is struggling with pests too. So maybe I should treat her as well. Okay, I guess I'm going to treat all three of these plants now, and they're all like kind of big leafed plants too, which actually makes it kind of easier. I find it easier to treat plants with bigger leaves. It's just easier to like get in there and scrub the leaves. If it's really small leaves, I find it a little bit more like finicky. It's pretty satisfying cleaning these big leaves though. I kind of want to chop this gloriosum up so that I'm just starting again with this leaf because I'm literally obsessed. Oh my goodness, the light is so hard to film right now. I'm literally obsessed with this leaf. Um, it is perfect, amazing. This leaf like basically made me fall in love with philodendron gloriosum. Um, I didn't really think much about this plant until this new leaf came out. Well, actually this one, but that one broke off and got bleached. It's actually on like a little stilt, a little stilt, <laughs> a little splint. When I posted on my Instagram story that the alocasia um, has spider mites, I was getting a lot of questions in my inbox as to how I was gonna treat them, which is another reason that I wanted to pick up the camera and film today while I do this. So I will show you what I use. Okay, so this is it. This is what I use. You can also buy this in like the spray bottle pre-mixed up, but this is just the concentrate. So you just mix it with water and you get way more. So, you know, but for me, it makes more sense to just buy this. 
and then I just mix it up in a little spray bottle. I do have some mixed up in here that I haven't used up completely, so I'm going to use that first, and then we'll see. I'll probably end up mixing another batch, and I'm just going to spray the whole plant, all both sides of the leaves. I'm going to spray the soil, everything, um, and then I'm also going to wash the trays that the plants are in as well. If you have a spider mite breakout and your plants are on shelves or anything, you're going to want to scrub down the shelf. It's very annoying. Um, luckily, I mean, I'll probably vacuum this because they're just sitting on the edge of the couch, but they can live on surfaces. I used to have those black wire plant shelves, and in my first spider mite breakout, it was so bad because I was a new plant parent and didn't really, it was like literally my first time, uh, and the whole shelf was crawling with spider mites. Like, they are just crawling all over the metal. It was absurd. So yeah, they definitely can live on surfaces. <laughs> just FYI, because if they keep coming back for you, it might be because you're just placing your plants, your nice clean treated plants back into an infested area. The nice thing is that if you get on top of it and just, you know, start treating your plants, they're likely not going to cause a ton of damage. Like they definitely don't wipe out your plants as quickly as something like Thrips does. They can be persistent, which is the annoying thing. You have to keep up with your treatment, so it can be a lot of work. But if you just start doing it, then you'll likely be able to save your plants. I really wish I had a bathroom with natural lighting so that I could show you guys things like this better, but I don't want to do this at my sink because there's other plants in that area and I just don't want to be like, you know, spreading this around. But it's very straightforward. All I'm going to do is spray the leaves down, like I said. Oop. Okay, I'm going to obviously have to do this with two hands, but <laughs> I'm just trying to give you guys the gist. So let me spray all these leaves down and then I just kind of like massage or like rub the product in and just kind of make sure that I'm like physically removing all of the webs and everything. So let me spray this down and then I'll show you. Okay, so I basically just kind of like literally just kind of rub it in on the leaf and this is just because I want to get into any crevices. Some leaves are really textured and really ribbed. This one isn't really so it's not really that bad. I don't know how necessary this is but um, that's just kind of what I do and I know that there's the method of using the makeup brush which um, I've seen a lot of people do. I think that that was originally kind of popularized by Rachel from Heart Shaped Leaves. Um, and I've seen a lot of people like sharing that since she did and I've definitely done that and it works amazing. I completely cured, I had a giant Calathea medallion that was literally ravaged by spider mice. It was so bad and I thought that I wasn't going to be able to bring that plant back but I did Rachel's method um, and used the makeup brush and everything and um, and I was able to get rid of them and that plant grew back healthy and beautiful. So yeah, it really does work, especially for bad infestations or just when you wanna be like really thorough. Or like I said, when a plant is really like textured because you, you can definitely get into all the crevices and everything with that. But yeah, this is kind of like the lazy man's version of that, I guess. <laughs> Obviously you wanna be gentle, especially if you're working with a delicate plant. This guy's pretty hardy. I love this guy so much, I can't believe that <laughs> he's covered in sp I can believe it actually. He's honestly probably had spider mites for a while because he just hasn't been thriving for a long time. And I know I've mentioned it before, I'm not sure which video I was talking about it in, but I was trying to figure out, I was like, why is he not doing well? Like, does he not like his new spot? Does he not like his repot? Like, what is going on? But I didn't even consider spider mites because this is actually his first time ever having spider mites, which is very impressive for an alocasia, so good for him. Incredible, one of my all-time favorite plants. I don't think I've ever said that before, but I'm deciding it right now because I really do love this alocasia. It might be my favorite alocasia, actually. Okay, so this is looking really good. I'm just gonna go in with a few more sprays just to make sure all the petioles and the um, soil is covered. Oh, 
Also, I do get questions on whether I, when I do these types of treatments, whether I rinse the plant off after or if I just leave it on. And I just leave it on, honestly. Um, it doesn't say to rinse off on the instructions of the product. So I just leave it on and I've never had a problem with that. Um, it says to retreat every 10 to 14 days, I think. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this. I have a feeling they might crop up again sooner than that. So, um, yeah. It's been really sunny lately, so it's really easy to see them, which is nice, but, but yeah, I'm just gonna have to, you know, keep monitoring. You know what? I just thought of something. I think that the spider mites originally came from this gloriosum. I kind of have a feeling because I remember seeing webbing in the bottom of this back when it was still in the cabinet, um, but I didn't really see any spider mites, so I just figured like, oh, maybe it's from an actual spider. But honestly, it could have had spider mice this whole time and it just hasn't been looking amazing, like the older leaves especially. So maybe it's had spider mites the whole time and then I moved it up beside this fry deck and now it gave my poor fry deck spider mites. Anyways, I'm just going to do the exact same thing to the Gloriosum now. Alright, so those are both done. I'm just going to leave them to sit there while I go clean the saucers and vacuum the couch. Also, I'm feeling a lot better. The green tea really did revive me. I'm actually making another cup right now. I'm a tea queen now. Remember when I used to always be drinking coffee? Who am I? This... Oh, oh, oh my goodness, everything is flying out of the cupboard. This is the one that I'm having. Organic jasmine green. Mm, I love jasmine tea so much. If I got this type of light all year, you guys, oh my goodness. It is just so pretty in here when the sun comes in. Oh, the rainbows are starting. Yes. We love rainbow hour. Oh, by the way, I get so many questions about these sun catchers and I try to respond to all the comments and leave the link. Um, but if you are wondering, I will link them in the description box of this video. So y'all can go check them out if you want. They're the gem series. I'll show you what they look like actually. So they're just these stickers. There's 10 of them on my window. And yeah, that is what creates the beautiful rainbow effect. And then as the sun moves, this rainbow just moves across the whole room and it's so divine. Some people ask if it's this that's creating the rainbows and that I've actually never hung in the sun. So I've never seen it shine, but it is a sun catcher. So I don't know. There's just nowhere because it's so delicate and it's kind of heavy and it's special to me. So I really don't want to break it. So I don't know where I could hang it. But if you guys have any ideas of a way I could put it in front of, I mean, I guess I could have. Well, no, I don't think I could have put a hook in like the whatever's around the window. Actually, maybe I could have put the hook above and then it would have would hang down far enough because it's a pretty long chain. Should I move this to in front of the window? Leave a comment. Let me know. Look at that new cutie leaf coming in on the glorious. Okay, I thought I was recording, but I guess I wasn't. I just scrubbed this saucer. So, I mean, you didn't really miss anything exciting. I'm just moving on to the larger saucer now. Um, just washing them with dish soap with my janky sponge here. This really needs to be replaced, but don't worry. This is just for plant supplies. I don't use this sponge on my dishes. This was my old dishes. I just cycle them through. I have like a nice new dish sponge. And then once that gets used up, then it becomes my plant supply sponge. And now it's about time to switch them out because this one's about done.
Okay, so the next thing that I need to do today is address my Anthurium. This is the Dark Forgetty Eye and Crystal Mag Hybrid. And as you can see, it is not doing well. And honestly, this plant has never really been doing well for me. I don't know what it is. It rotted once before, so I rerooted it in perlite. The roots looked amazing. I potted it up again, and now I think it's rotting again. Um, I can only see like a couple roots on the outside and this one looks like it's going translucent which would tell me it's rotting also another sign that i'm noticing is that it is not really uptaking water like this is just staying wet so that's also a sign of rot which is really frustrating because i thought that this plant was finally going to like start growing for me i was not expecting it to rot twice in a row so i'm just going to take it out today we're going to take a look at the roots if they are rotting I'm gonna remove them and try to reroute in perlite once again. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, we'll see. I don't know why I have such bad luck with this plant. I mean, I struggle with anthuriums for sure. Like really the only one that doesn't hate me is, oh yeah, look at this. There's literally roots that are just falling off. The only anthurium for me that's really doing well is my politiflorum. Thank goodness it's doing well. Well, that's not true. My viterifolium is, do I do have some doing okay. I shouldn't be so hard on myself, but I just in general struggle with them. Um, okay, so yeah, these are squishy on the ends. Like I can just squish these between my fingers, which that is not what you want. Oh yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to remove these again. Oh my goodness. It's just getting a little old at this point. I mean, it's it was really easy to reroot last time, so hopefully that's the case again, although I do just have this one sad leaf on it, so I don't know, folks. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it in perlite for longer this time after it roots, because it seems to be happy in there. Maybe I'll do semi-hydro with it, actually, because I'm just not having any luck with soil. And yeah, I'm literally just gonna cut all the roots off that I can see. I really take no chances. Once a plant is rotting, um, oh, there's one singular healthy root. Oh my goodness, okay, I'm gonna leave that one. Oh, it's so cute. Do you see that like one right there? That one healthy white one? It's like growing. It's putting in all the work for the rest that are rotting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one, but literally cutting everything else off. Now, what I would like to do is soak this in hydrogen peroxide, but of course I don't have any on hand, which is kind of annoying. So I'm just gonna wash this off in the sink and then we are going to pot it into perlite. Kind of happy that there's that one healthy root that's actually helpful quite helpful you really want to remove like as much of the bad roots as you can because it's just going to spread up i mean not all the time but you know, you just want to get rid of as much of the rot as possible. Okay, I'm just going to go rinse this off. Then we're going to pot it up. Okay, I just very gently washed with dish soap and water. Just to get like most of the potting mix off and everything. So that's what it's looking like. And then I'm just gonna be using a clear cup and I'm just gonna put some of this perlite. This is kind of a mixture of perlite and LECA. I'm just gonna be using that.
Okay, I just removed some off of the top because I didn't want it buried too deep. I can see kind of where the top roots start there, which is, I think, pretty good. So I'm just gonna be filling this up with some water with a drop of Super Thrive because that's gonna help support the roots and, you know, hopefully encourage faster root growth. And then I'm gonna be putting this back into my Mills Bow Tall because that's where it's been living. I mean, maybe it hates the Mills Bow. Maybe it hates the Mills Bow, I don't know. But for now, at least to root it, I think I'm gonna be keeping it in there. I just fill it up about a third of the way, so it's all good to go now. All right, I think that is going to be it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me and, ooh, sun in the eyes. I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me and doing these little planty rescue projects. I guess I didn't really show the plants after I treated them. I'll show you them quickly. Okay, so here's the fry deck. And as you can see, well, it might be hard to see, but there's no more webbing, which is so nice. Bless. So hopefully he can just recover now. I'm going to keep checking on him every couple of days. If I see any, I'll do another treatment as soon as possible. But if I don't, then I'm probably just going to do it once weekly. Either with that Safer is my decide or with my Sacred Elements um, leaf tonic. I just wanted to go in with the miticide today because I feel like that's like the big guns when it comes to spider mites. So just to like do the initial killing of the infestation. That sounds so bad. I don't like that. But <laughs> that's like essentially what it is. Sorry, spider mites. And then the Gloriosum kind of looks the same. You couldn't really see a lot of webbing on it to begin with. But yeah, there they are. Hopefully healthy and happy now. I hope that all of your plants are happy and healthy right now. Fall is typically the worst for houseplant pests. So let me know down below if you are experiencing pests as well or how your plants are doing. I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Um, I think that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.